my shadows look on my face. It's just funny. I haven't paid that much attention to them, but the more I pay attention to them, the more I see them. Um, right now I'm wondering, where am I going to upload this video? Because sometimes the Wi-Fi is not as strong here, so if I don't uh, so that it'll take a long time and I might want to use my phone. I'm also thinking that I need glasses. Today I don't have any on. You know, needing a new pair. It's hard to ask about and talk about your needs, isn't it? Any of them, really. Any of them that seem like, well, don't you need those for everyday things? You know, you need your glasses to see. Makes me feel a little bit squirrely, nutty, to be like, can you see me? Can you see me? But I guess, I guess it's fine. Um, I'll probably put some music in the background because this is very weird to be back on camera. Last year, I did have some things on camera. There were definitely a handful, more than a handful of videos where I would talk about creativity and the creativity that was inspiring me and the creativity that um, was just really pushing me to think about things. There were some books that I was reading that was really important that were really, like I was reading at that time. Um, I feel like I can't see my face because I shaved off all my hair. That's not exactly true. And because I don't have contacts in or glasses on. Like, makes me feel like I'm going like this a lot. But I did shave my hair. So, um, but that's not, that's not the only thing I want to talk about. Um, I'm trying to talk about how it is to be vulnerable, and those are some things that I just haven't been able to feel great about that I have, um, that I have going on in my life. Um, so, okay, so feel great or feel, like I still feel like I'm working towards them, but I don't feel great about them, but the working towards them part is winning, if that makes any sense. Um, and I've been meaning to talk again this year about um, creativity and not, not creativity necessarily like it was last year, but like just some things in my heart. Um, so I'm meaning to take a little turn and like figure out and like talk about other things that I figured out this year. So one of the things I figured out is that I need, uh, it's fine for me and I need to start journaling again and um, blogging and that's what this is for me, is to start doing that again. Um, I basically wanted to start with the vulnerability and then the boundary part of it because um, boundaries are really important and they haven't come always easy for me um, and I used I have I've been um, wondering more and more <laughs> um, about them so so that's my important task of today it's a good task and I'm going to stick to it so let me get comfortable because that's not a very comfortable position for a leg more than five minutes. Um, I kind of wish I had like a background here. I don't know why it's foggy. Maybe I did something wrong with the camera. I didn't dress up. I don't have any makeup on. Um, I didn't dress up my studio yet. My lovely studio. But I did just start a studio for 
my paintings and drawings and fun stuff like that. So, to start, I've got a little couch here behind me that is going to be a focal piece. And so if you can get with that, um, I'll try to keep the video, excuse me, the videos bright, and cheerful, and honest. <laughs> um, so, this is my focal point today. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, boundaries. I wrote down, yeah. I've been thinking this morning about boundaries. Um, today, it's, uh, excuse me. Um, there's really no comfortable position to sit on the floor. <laughs> and I don't have anything else to, like, work with, like, a chair to put here, or like I need something to put this um, camera on so that it actually is stable when I take videos. It's just not today. So I have that little issue with this. So we'll see what I can do. Um, be right back. So I want to show you something, things, so that um, it's kind of easy to understand what I'll be working towards and what I'm working towards. So, um, like I said, I want to do the um, creativity stuff and the talk about stuff. So last year I was doing more of the talk about stuff and then the, um, yeah, I was going to talk about stuff, and I was doing some, some of the, some of the creativity stuff, just not as much. I was talking about it, but not showing what I was doing, um, last year. So, um, I want, I want to talk about boundaries as well, but I'll do that afterwards. It just helps me to talk about it. Um, so I want to show you what I've been working on. Um, there's a few things I have here. Most of these things are easy to find, very easy to find, but um, they're going to be, there's going to be lots of different creative projects that I'll be working on. I learned how to sit on the heels here. And uh, I know how to use a lot of things, like I know how to use a lot of like mediums and stuff like that. From paintbrushes, it's not a medium, but you know what I mean, painting acrylics or oils or watercolor. I know how to use Play-Doh, I know how to use modeling clay, I know how to use glass, you know, like pieces and stuff like that. I know how to use like lots of bonding materials. I know how to use lots of that, but I want to start like um, using them in creative projects, and so I'm going to use them in creative projects. Um, and so right now I'm kind of like making an effort to just gather a lot of raw materials for those projects, and um, like something I did yesterday was take, like I have these old plates. They're probably not super old, but they they look vintage. They don't look like something you buy at like, you know, your department store today. Um, they look vintage. They're set in like a red 
pattern kind of like this. You can see the gold maybe in the, remember filigree, that word filigree? I think that's what this is. It looks like there's a pattern on it, the flowers and stuff like that. So if I get a better picture. It's kind of like this piece here. See that like line there? It's like that, but on the red. And this is part of that too. So this piece is about that size. And if you can imagine like, you know, something this big of a painting, like you could use this as like a bigger piece in like a mosaic and then have like, you could break up more of the plates into smaller pieces, maybe like this. See if I can show you. Like this. See how small that is? And then in that square, you'll like line them up into like a picture. Like if you wanted a swirl, you could like follow the swirl with the, you know, use the same color or whatever, and use the whole background white. And it's about like, it's like bricklay. It's like, a pattern or a puzzle. You want to put all the pieces together um, in a way that makes a picture and in your, in your frame. So this piece is a little big, but you can always smash it. And to smash it, I usually just like um, put it in a bag, take it outside, <clears throat> put it in a thick bag. It's used just mainly for like glass pieces unless you can wash it out or else the shards don't stay in it. Um, Especially if it's glass. Ceramics, not as bad as glass. Um, and like take a rock and just like gently like hammer it, you know, on the ground. That's cement, not on wood. Because it'll dent your wood. But yeah, that's really a pretty piece. And you got lots of colors in it. And it will make a great pattern piece for a decorative project. In the background, like if you have, if you have, <clears throat> like you can buy um pieces like frames and stuff like that and something that has a little bit of a lip around the edge like if this is your canvas you want a little lip around it meaning it's raised a little bit so there's like a bed and you can fill it partially while you're working on the parts that you're working on with like cement um and and then lay your pieces in and for the mosaic, I know there's other types, you can use white cement and stuff like that if you don't want just gray cement, um, because that will, that'll help it set. It'll be a really heavy piece, you might just put it on the ground, but there's other things you can use too, um, even Mod Podge, to like make a picture like that. You could paint in the background and fill the whole thing after you lay your pieces with just like a bottle of glue, and that'll also let it sit, and that'll just, that will just look glossy and clear, which is not bad, but it depends on what kind of look you want. So that's another picture you could use the glass pieces for. These were made in the USA. So this is 22 karat something. Interesting, huh? It says warranted 22 karat. What does that mean? 22 karat gold? Are you kidding me? It's hilarious. It says that on here. Wow. It's crazy. I didn't know that. Well, maybe I'll use it. I don't know. I don't know. You can't scratch it off, can you? It's quite a pretty picture. For gold. I didn't know they actually did that. I mean, they kind of did. I knew they did silver, but I didn't know... It was that easy to find. I just kind of picked these up, you know? Um, so, so that's fun. So that's the first piece. I also thought about doing a mandala or some circle painting with like a centerpiece, something round in the middle, something like that. It's not exactly how I want to do these. I'll probably break. I'll probably keep one or two for painting. Like this could be the palette or whatever. Um, to mix colors on. It's not the perfect palette, but it might work. But this would be an awesome piece of ceramic as well. And then this one, this one looks like it has gold on the outside too, if you can see the shiny on the out, outer lip there. Um, this one's in Syracuse. Federal shape. Made in America. It's pretty. It's got blue. This one's got blue. 
You could also use the backs of them for a picture, like over here, if you break it, and like this one has an arch in it, but you could still like imagine like something something that has raised sides and edges to it. Um, depending on what kind of picture you want, you can make it 3D looking. You could. Um, just a little chair. Push myself in here. Um, something else I've been working on is just picking up this little bit of things. This is a tub of Play-Doh of some sort. I don't know if it says Play-Doh. No, it says modeling dough. So it's not, it's generic. It's a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, like not so, you know, body. But it's there. Dough. It's got a red lid, meaning it's red Play-Doh. The inside is red. Red. Um, and so you can take out a little piece. Take out a little piece. Like this much. It's not that much. And then um, what I'm doing is I'm making it into a um, just so it's soft and pliable and doesn't have um, any cracks in it really. Um, hold on. sit here and show you this one. And then there's, so it's like this big, right? Like on my hand, right? And I'm rolling it, but I have this straw. It's got like, it's like if you compare it, it's about going to be about the same size. You're going to stick the Play-Doh in there, but not the whole thing. You're going to leave a little tip on it. So, let's see, I'm going to roll it into a ball. then roll it into like this oval oblong shape, getting most of the cracks out of it. You can kind of make it like a rectangle first, I'll show you. So that's like a rectangle, right? See the square edges and stuff? It's like a really funny little area, but I guess Alright, so I want to make it as close to that size as possible. And then I'm trying to put it into the straw. Don't want to drop any of the edges. The edges here will kind of like flake over the side of the straw and you just keep rolling the clay so it's smaller and smaller but fits just inside the uh, straw. Now I don't want that much inside the straw. I only want about that much and right now I think I have about that much. So I'm going to only push in a little bit more, yeah, because that's what I'm working with. As soon as it starts to get 